In the previous video we talked about the LGM model for the operational amplifier and learn the basic rules of how it works. Today we are going to talk about the simplest circuit you can make with an operational amplifier, which is the voltage comparator. We'll start out with the basic operational amplifier, one output, two inputs, and we'll add the power supply connections And a quick review of the rules and how this circuit works. The operational amplifier will adjust its output voltage to whatever it takes to make the input voltages equal. If it cannot make them equal, then it's going to go to one end or the other of the power supply minus a small percentage. Uh, specifically, if the voltage at the inverting input is higher than the voltage at the non-inverting input, the voltage will go down, and it will go down until either these two voltages become equal or it hits the bottom limit, which uh, would be approximately minus 9.5 volts, typically. On the other hand, if the voltage at the non-inverting input is higher than the voltage at the inverting input, the voltage will go upwards, and it will go upwards until either these voltages become equal or it hits the upper limit, which I would expect to be about 9.5 volts positive. And that's a quick review of what the operational amplifier does. So for a comparator circuit, we have no connection from the output back to the input. So nothing that happens on the output is going to have any effect on the input. So let's take a look at some scenarios. Let's put plus 2.5 volts on the non-inverting input and plus 2.4 volts on the inverting input. So now the voltage at the non-inverting input is higher than the voltage at the inverting input, so the output voltage will go up. And since there's nothing that will happen at the output that makes any change to the input, it will continue to go up until it reaches the upper limit, which would be approximately 9.5 volts in this case. On the other hand, let's say one of these changes, let's put this at 2 3 volts now. Now the voltage at the inverting input is higher than the voltage at the non-inverting input. That's going to drive the output voltage downward. And once again, since there's no connection from the output back to the input, nothing that happens here will have any effect on the input voltages, so it will continue to go down until it reaches the bottom limit, which will be approximately 9.5 volts negative. And so that's all the voltage comparator does. It just tells us which one is higher and which one is lower. The op-amp has very high gain, which means that very tiny differences in these voltages will make it operate. So we could have something like positive 2.375 volts here and positive 2.376, and that one thousandth of a volt uh, is going to be enough to operate the amplifier. So which one is higher? The voltage at the non-inverting input is higher than the voltage at the inverting input. That's going to drive the output up to the upper limit. So we can differentiate between some very small differences in voltages. One use we might have for a comparator circuit is to detect when our battery goes down below a certain level to turn on a light to tell us it's time to change the batteries. So in this case, let's put a light emitting diode on the output, put a, a uh, current limiting resistor, a light emitting diode, and the idea is we want this voltage to go as high as it can in order to turn on this LED when this voltage drops below a certain level. Let's say we want that to happen at 5 volts. Now, coming off of an op-amp, I don't strictly need this current limiting resistor here because the op-amp is not going to be able to deliver enough current to damage a light emitting diode when it turns on. However, I want to put that there to help us illustrate what's going to happen with this circuit. So let's put a Zener diode here for reference voltage. Here's our current limiting resistor, Zener diode, and we'll make this a 2.5 volt Zener diode. And you'll see why in a few minutes. Why don't we use a 5 volt Zener diode? Well, you'll see in a little while. 
Then we want to come off of the 10 volt power supply through a voltage divider. And we'll make these two equal resistors. Uh, how about uh, 100K each? And recall the voltage divider theory. If our two resistors are equal, the voltage between them will be half of the voltage at the top of the, uh, of the chain of resistors. So what's going to happen now, as this voltage drops here, this voltage will be half of whatever that voltage is. So let's look at it right now. While this voltage is 10 volts, this is 2.5 volts here. So we have plus 2.5 volts. And this voltage will be half of that voltage. So that's going to be plus 5 volts. So the voltage at the non-inverting input is lower than the voltage at the inverting input. That's going to drive the voltage on the output as far as it will go, in this case about minus 9.5 volts. So as this voltage drops, let's say it drops down to 7 volts as the battery weakens, well this will drop down to half of that, so plus 3.5 volts. So at 7 volts this voltage will still be higher than that voltage. It will still be driving the output as far as it will go. The LED will not turn on. Let's say this now drops down to 5.1 volt, which means that this will be 5.1 volt. So the voltage here will be exactly half of that. So that's going to be 2.55 volts. Still higher at the inverting input than the non-inverting input, so the output will still be at the lower limit. Finally, when this drops down below 5 volts, so now we're a hundredth of a volt below, that means that this will be half of that, so that's going to be 249 so now we are a hundredth of a volt below the voltage at the non-inverting input. So the voltage at the non-inverting input is higher than the voltage at the inverting input. That's going to drive the output positive, and it's going to go all the way up until it reaches this plus 4.99 volts. And 4.99 volts on the output, and that is going to turn on the LED. So now, this has gone up to 4.99 volts, the LED is lit up, and telling us it's time to change your battery. Another thing we could do with a comparator circuit is to make a time delay circuit. Let's say we want to trigger a relay after a certain amount of time has passed. So there is the coil that operates the relay, here are the switch contacts. So that's going to turn on a light, turn on something else, who knows what it is. It's going to be something that we want a, a delay. Just to make the mathematics easy, let's say we want a 6.32 second delay, because we can use some convenient numbers that way. So let's put 6.32 volts on the inverting input. How do we get that? We could use a Zener diode or... Uh, if this voltage is stable enough, we could use a voltage divider, but whatever we need to get the 6.32 volts there. Now we're going to make a time delay circuit. We'll run this up to the 10 volts through a switch that we can flip to start the timer, a resistor, and a capacitor. And just to make the math easy, let's make this a 1 farad capacitor and a 10 ohm resistor. If you remember your capacitor time constants, you know that if you multiply those two numbers together, you will get the number of seconds it will take for this capacitor to charge up to 63.2 percent of the supply voltage. So we have 10 ohms and 1 farad. Multiply those together, we get 10. So that means it will take 10 seconds for this to reach 6.32 volts. Another modification I want to do is, first, I want to make this an LM324. 
because then I can do this. I can ground the negative supply instead of having a second battery, and we also know with the LM324 that the output voltage can go all the way down to this voltage, so this can reach zero volts. Just to make sure that this capacitor is discharged, let's put a very large resistor across it. That one megohm is not going to have an effect on the time constant. It's just uh, too big of a resistance compared to the 10 ohms uh, in the regular timing circuit. That will discharge the capacitor and make sure that there's no voltage across it until we flip that switch. Okay, let's run this circuit. I'm going to flip the switch. Now at the moment I flip the switch, this capacitor will of course have zero volts across it. So there's my zero volts. And as time goes by, that voltage is going to climb. And we know from our capacitor time constants and what we already calculated, that 10 seconds after I flip this switch, this voltage will reach 6.32 volts. Let's just add a hundredth of a volt just for good measure, plus 6.33 volts, because once that becomes higher than that, once the voltage at the non-inverting input becomes higher than the voltage at the inverting input, that's going to drive the output all the way up to its limit, which is going to make this approximately plus 9.5 volts, which will energize the coil of the relay, turn on the relay, and operate whatever that switch goes to. So that is the comparator circuit. Any circuit you need where you simply want to compare two voltages and have an output based on which voltage is higher, that's what we would use a comparator for. In our next video, we'll take this one step further and make a circuit called a voltage follower or unity gain amplifier.